Welcome to day 4 of the Remotion 4.0 launch week. Actually, this is the first video that I am recording after we have released Remotion 4.0 and in the meanwhile I have seen all of your reception which has been overwhelmingly positive. So I want to thank you a lot for all of the support that you have shown and I am very glad that I get to do this. To do what? For example, to improve our capabilities for data-driven videos, which is the topic of today. This concept actually already existed in Remotion 3.0, but in hindsight, it sometimes caused some problems. How it worked was that you would define a state and do data fetching inside a use effect. And you would combine it with a delay render call, which makes it so that the render does not start until the data fetching is done. And then you use the continue render call to unblock the render. And then you would pass the data to the default props. The first caveat of this approach is overfetching. Remotion during rendering actually works in two stages. The first one is the evaluation stage where it figures out how long the video is going to be, how, how big and what the props are going to be. And once Remotion has figured this out, it will spawn many Chrome tabs to enable multi-threading. And this use effect will just trigger in every Chrome tab. So if we are rendering with a concurrency of four, it will execute four plus one times, which actually led in some cases to people hitting rate limits. And of course, in general, being very inefficient. The second problem was that you had to remember to call delay render and continue render. And if an error would happen, then you would have to call cancel render. Otherwise the error would get swallowed and you would not see the reason for the render failing. You would just see a weird timeout message. So it was hard to debug unless you implemented the pattern very precisely. The third annoyance was that you had to keep a loading state with no data and in your component you also had to handle the case where there is no data because it would mount immediately. With Remotion 4.0 we are solving all of these problems. This is the new way. Now there is a new prop called calculate metadata that you can specify for a composition. It accepts a function, either synchronous or asynchronous, so that in this case, we can actually use async await, and it allows you to specify the props in a callback fashion. Besides the props, we can also override the duration, the frame rate, and the height and the width of the video. Note that here we don't have to use useState and no use effect. We also do not have to use delay render and Remotion will handle the error automatically for us and surface it if this function is going to throw. Your composition will not be mounted while the calculate metadata function is running. Rather, if I now change the function, it will re-evaluate it and a spinner is showing while the data is loading and your component will only be mounted once the data has been received. Note, however, that you need to define default props for your component. And these default props, as well as the props that your calculate metadata function returns, must both satisfy the shape of the props that your component accepts. So in this case, I still need to define a null state and actually I just throw an error if the null state occurs because it should never occur. And we might simplify this in a future Remotion version. However, we want to get it right. So as of now, the shape of your default props and the props returned by your calculate metadata function, they must match. If your calculate metadata is going to throw, like in this case, then now we have nice inline error messages where the stack traces are symbolicated in the Remotion Studio as well as during rendering. And there is even a retry calculate metadata button that you can press in case the error was on the backend 
and you now fixed it. We can also combine this feature with visual editing. For this, I have defined a schema which includes a Pokemon ID. And I've added the schema to the props of our component. Now, I have registered the schema in our composition, and that makes it that we have access to the Pokemon ID in our calculate metadata function. We do this by destructuring the first argument of calculate metadata and uh, taking props from it. This props now takes either the default props of our component or preferably the values that are here in the right sidebar. And we can call props at Pokemon ID, which by the way is completely type safe. It's hard to make a mistake if you use TypeScript. And uh, in the end, we transform the props by taking the previous props and adding the response to it. One annoying thing might be that now we are updating the props here really, really fast with this slider. And that also means a lot of network requests. One thing we can do against this is we can use the abort signal that we also get from calculate metadata and we can pass it to our fetch call. And what this will do is, so our function is being called for every prop change, but if this prop change is not even the newest anymore, then we can abort this network request and only wait for the last one to complete. Alternatively, you can also search for debouncing in our docs and you will find an example that you can copy paste to wait until the props have settled for a while before you start making the network request. Let's now talk about how we can dynamically define the width, height and duration of a remotion composition. For this, I have made a new component that just renders a video. And our goal is to make our composition the same width, height, and make it have the same duration as the video that we are embedding. For this, I have again defined a calculate metadata function, which is asynchronous and calls get video metadata. This is an API that we provide from the remotion media utils package. In the calculate metadata function, we return width and height, the same as we have retrieved from the metadata and a duration in frames. However, the metadata returns a duration in seconds, so we have to be careful here and multiply it with our frame rate. If we define a calculate metadata function that returns width, height, duration, or FPS, then we can actually delete these props from our composition and keep it simple that way. These calculate metadata functions can actually get quite sophisticated over time. So what I actually recommend to you is to not keep it inline in your root file, but rather keep it in the same file as your component and your schema. At least to me, it feels like what belongs together is all in the same place. And then you can just reference the function from your root file. What comes in really handy for this is this calculate metadata function type that we export from Remotion. And it is a generic type where you have to pass in the type of your props for perfect type safety. Let's now take a look at a few examples, starting with this project. This is what I am using to edit the video that you are watching right now. You know the motto of our Remotion 4.0 launch week, do more with React. So the video that you are watching right now is of course also edited with React. And what we are doing in this case is we have a calculate metadata function, which calls promise to all to fetch the data on a bunch of videos, as well as the width and height to create a nice layout 
afterwards. We can also trim the video at the start and at the end using visual editing. And uh, here we have an array of scenes. So um, I do not have to touch much code for this actually. And in the end, we just call dot reduce to sum together all the durations minus the time that has been trimmed away and use this to determine the duration of our video. And uh, just for a bonus, we add the duration of the intro to it. This is also built into this project. This is the Stargazer template, which you can actually get using NPM init video. And here on the right hand side, we have some inputs where you can enter a repository name as well as set a arbitrary duration. So I change it and magically the video gets shorter. We achieve this using this calculate metadata function, which performs data fetching as well as setting the duration all in one go. You only need one calculate metadata function to do both. You might find that you want to have inputs on the right hand side, but you don't want to have an input for the API response. And how you can properly do this is to define a schema for your inputs and then merge it using regular TypeScript types. That way you maintain perfect type safety and only have to create a schema for what you want to be an input in our props editor. Now, if you are going to render a video, you of course want to do it using dynamic data and not have to edit it in our props editor or in the code. So this is where input props come into play. So for this, it's good to know how the props flow in Remotion. So we have props, which is the data that a React component accepts. And we have to define default props if we register a composition so that when we start the Remotion Studio, there is some placeholder data that we can look at to not make the React component crash. So if we edit values in the right sidebar of the Remotion Studio, we actually edit the default props. This is because we still have the intention to eventually replace these props with some data that is being specified at render time. And this is what input props are. The props that are being passed when you are triggering a render. So if you trigger a render, what is happening is that the input props override the default props if you have specified some. And then the calculate metadata function gets called to give you the option to transform the props. And then the result of that is the final props that are being passed to the React component. Good to know. While we think calculate metadata is the best way to perform data fetching and dynamically determining the duration of a video, the old way will continue to work. So if you still have some code that looks like this, you do not have to refactor it. Normally it is forbidden in Remotion to create values that depend on randomness. And we would get a warning if we were to use math.random in a Remotion project. We can bypass this warning by uh, calling the random function with a null seed in Remotion, in case you didn't know. And uh, calculate metadata is the exception to the rule. We now support um, fetching a random Pokemon or giving a video a random width, height, and duration if you like to do so. In this example, I've done all of the three things. So if I refresh here in the Remotion Studio, I get a video with a different width and height and duration every time. This is now officially supported. Maybe this is great news if you were about to build a random video generator. This is everything that you need to know about data fetching and dynamic metadata 
in Remotion 4.0. With these new capabilities, creating data-driven videos is much easier and more reliable now. So we can't wait what you do with it. Thank you for watching this longest video in this series. As you can see, the sun has long gone down, but nonetheless, I will see you tomorrow for the last video of the Remotion 4.0 launch week.